selected seek out the best Two words to describe the activity. Do your you to follow me, Say to you on Be your the first to know. Call TV news. From the north, south, east, west, and around Africa. Presidential ambition. We break the news. Men in Nigeria. Now you can catch all the actions live. I wish you would. As the news breaks. We are Call TV News. Welcome to Call TV Prime Time. Our 24 hour news station. All right, thank you for joining us again on Call Digest this morning. I'm joined now by political affairs analyst Victor Ohai. Good morning. Good morning. Merry Christmas to you. Same to you and same to the viewers. And what's the mood like? Have you bought the fowl yet? Or <laughs> you are killing a ram this uh, season? Well, <laughs> <laughs> we're still preparing. Okay. Yeah. But definitely something we have to die. Unfortunately, <laughs> <laughs> Christmas and this celebra uh, uh, celebration times are those times when something must give up its life I for see. happiness to spread. Okay. Sad, but um, yeah. Quite sad as well because um, why we celebrate Christmas this season? Uh, the way it used to be those years, they get new clothes for children almost every season. Some have said that that in and of itself is even a show of poverty to a level that you have to wait till the end of the year to buy a Christmas cloth. But the sad reflection of all of this is that millions of Nigerians are now refugees in their own homes. Reports, recent reports tells about the sad nature of life that these Nigerians live within the camps. But there's been lots of promises from the federal government. Are you baffled at all that reports from the camps are still not good at the start? Um, it will be unfortunate if those reports are true, but it is also good that they are coming to light. Mm -hmm. And the reason being that um, uh, we have a society where the rich steal from the poor. It may not be for lack of provision of amenities or, you know, uh, the essentials of basic living for the uh, refugees in the camp. Mm -hmm. But it may just be that some of the people in charge of these camps, who themselves are ordinarily comfortable, will be stealing from the very poor. It is um, it is common, unfortunately, in this in this part of the world, and especially in Nigeria. You might find that a hundred bags of rice may have been donated, forty or sixty of them may have been diverted. And the rest will now be shared among these poor, homeless, uh, uh, destitute refugees. You know, so uh, it's good that it's coming to light. So that because um, I, I have no doubt that it's possible that people, not just government but private individuals, are, are making uh, uh, provisions for um, uh, for these refugees, internally displaced persons, if I may say. You know, um, you know, in 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 this in in this part. Are we looking at the Nigerian factor creeping in again? Because there was a fundraising event where billions of Nigeria, I mean billions of dollars or even naira, I'm not sure right now, were pledged for this cause, and yet we are still not hearing visible and feasible improvement of the quality of life of those people. What would you say is the reason for this? Well, uh, first. I think, although it, the, it was at the instance of the president or the presidency, but it is still, it was raised privately and it is being managed privately. So I do not think that the government has anything to do with that, although I also do not, I cannot um, exonerate government from responsibility for okay. the IDP, the internal displaced persons. So um, as for the fund, the question should be directed at. Uh, T. White and Juma and those that have been mandated to, to manage the funds. Um, I think they may have short, medium and long term plans for the fund. Mm. It could be that the funds might be to uh, help rehabilitate these areas after the war is over. Okay. It could be that some of it is targeted at um, you know, uh, helping these people find um, uh, so in the medium term. And, uh, so, Most of the um, people here. But as it is coming up, I think the pressure will be on them to speak up and okay. say what it is they have started doing about the funds. Let's quickly find out what the 
pulse of these people are like and what they have to say as we get the situation at the various camps in northeast Nigeria. For the past three years, we have been enduring insurgents' attacks. Recently, we were driven out from our communities by the insurgents. We ran into the bush and found our way to this camp. They killed a lot of people and bought our houses. The military run leave us there. That's why everybody in Mubi starts run. On a weekly basis, we invite those that are living with family and friends in order to come and collect some food stuff here, what will be able to take care of a family of five for at least one week. Okay, we'll also bring you other sounds as the show goes on, but the bottom line is that these people are not happy with where they are. And you know, there are other sounds we've even gotten from there. Somebody saying, we're not even beyond giving us food because we understand that lots of charity groups you know institutions religious bodies have joined hands together to provide certain basic needs for them they're also yearning to return home do you see that happening anytime soon um it's not immediately advisable and um, because it's dangerous at the moment yeah. first you need to secure the area uh, or recapture the area and then secure the area um before you can expose people by asking them to go back. Mm. But I can understand that it is important for them because where they are, they're, some of them are comfortable where they're coming from. Mm. But here they are at the mercy of you know, uh, the general public receiving handouts. Mm. So I can understand they're wanting to go back. Um, but, you know, I, I was listening to the sound by then, heard what... Um, uh, one of them, a gentleman, said and he said that they had to flee because the military themselves had abandoned and had run away. And it gives me cause for concern because if the very people that are supposed to protect you are themselves uh, running for cover, then where is your hope? You know. So um, it's it's sad. It just tells you that, and which is also why. Um, they cannot just go back because if they go back, they'll just be murdered like 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 chickens. Mm. Right? So you also recall that there are stories of um, another fifty-four Nigerian soldiers that have been sentenced to death after their conviction of uh, mutiny by a general court martial of the Nigerian army. Would this be the right way to go in is instilling discipline into these folks? Unfortunately, and if I say so. It might seem hard. I'm not for death penalty, let me make that clear. But quite frankly, the way the military is, um, I, I listen to, I've listened to all sides of the argument, and uh, it is said that, you know, uh, the Nigerian military is not a conscription mm. service. It's a voluntary service, which means you enter voluntarily. And there are methods or ways or procedures for living as well. Mm. And so that option is available to anyone okay. who does not, who cannot cope, or who feels he do, has no business in the military. Mm. And so people should explore such methods because if I put a security man in my house, who would flee at the first um, sign of danger? Then I mean, then I mean, my life is in danger. He's paid to defend me, okay? That's right. Not to think about, I mean, that's what he has signed for. Mm. He's my first line of defense. Otherwise, there's no business being there. What about the situation where they are saying the major reason why they are not doing what they're asked to do is because they are ill-equipped to do so. For instance, someone is asking me to present this show without clothes on. You no, think I'll I would have this, done that? No, listen. Um, um, Fortunately, we have social media and other means right now. Um, I would expect that some of them are some of them are savvy and they would know what to do. If that is the case, we well, it's not today we've started seeing leaks in government services, in government agencies, and all that. Yeah. If that problem is there, and I'm not saying it's not there, I believe that there's an element of truth in it. Um, but we found a situation where. Um, the military officers that they admit that they they are 
uh, you know, um, uh, um, the, whose orders are disobeying are not that high up. There are people who are going into the fields with them. I had a call situation where, because I've read this extensively, uh, an officer, a lieutenant colonel or so, when he could not get uh, battalion drivers to move the vehicles, had to begin to drive himself. You know, that's not, in the, the military is different. That's not bringing unnecessary sentiments into this thing. Right. The, the issue, the idea behind the death sentence is to send a signal. Why did Fela call them zombie? It's a zombie way now. If you say go, you go. That's the way it is. Right. You, there's no other way. You go and that's it. If you are talking about who else is going to fight the battle? Right. You understand what I'm saying? It's, it's what you've signed for. If you, if you go and imagine if we're fighting a foreign government and the foreign government is better equipped than us, then our military will now say, oh, because we, are, we don't have good enough arms, we cannot fight. You cannot say that. You may be a ragtag army, it's not an excuse, okay? But if you have to, you will defend with what you've got. You understand what I'm saying? And the reason behind this is to make sure that it doesn't continue happening. Because if you let this go, it will continue. And believe me, we are the ones up for it. But then, if this death sentence goes through, what impact do you see it having on the morale of the Nigerian army? And what reaction do you see from Nigerians in an aftermath of the possibility of this taking place? I don't think I don't I think we should leave the military to do their job. We have we have we have hired them to defend us. And they have their ways. Would that automatically um, make Nigerian soldiers no, more patriotic? So. Mm. It's not about being it's not about being more patriotic. What it will simply the signal it will send to the others is look, if you don't want to be in the army, leave the army. Mm. That is that is signal. You you see a lot of people went into the army years back. Uh, not necessarily these young uh, boys that are here now. But a lot of them went in thinking that the army will continue in power. There are a lot of people in the army today. It's like people going to custom because they think it's an easy way to make money. Many people went into the army thinking that the army will continue in power and it will, it's an easy way to become governors and uh, ministers and all that through coups. Unfortunately, okay. Now they have a battle to fight. That is, that's what they have been hired to do, nothing else. Okay. The military, you, the moment you sign it, you sign it for death. Unfortunately, you understand? So such sentiments you don't bring into it. Otherwise, I tell you, this country will be in danger. Unfortunately, also, these are hard facts. I may be sounding yeah. hard, but I said it in the beginning. I do not, I do not subscribe to death sentence. Yeah. I hope there's another way out. So I do not, I, I'm not in support that they should be killed. But we must not interfere with the military, and then we must allow them to do discipline the way, they know, the best way they know how. If you bring in civilian sentiments into it, we will be in greater danger. Are we also considering the nature and the uh, motivation with which these young Nigerians were recruited into the army? All like those days when people really want to fight. Many people now join the army for economic reasons. Have you considered that at all? Well, if you join for economic reasons, you 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 see you you will take the economic benefits along with the other benefits. You cannot take one and leave the other. The day, from the day you sign, you know you must go to war. From the day you sign, you know you must handle a gun. From the day you sign, you know you must face a bullet. You understand? I'm saying, for the day you sign, you know you have signed to defend this country, no matter what. You cannot just take the economic benefit and forget the other benefit. How can I go to work and not do the work I'm paid for? I can't just collect a salary and not do the job. Yeah. I mean, so it's, it, it goes with the territory. Well, uh, you're saying now that ill-equipped or not, the Nigerian no, that's not, army... See, don't put words no, 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 in no, 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 You said no. I said... No, listen. Because you started by saying I said. <laughs> so I, you, we have to be careful about that. Okay. Are you saying... That's better. That... Ill equipped or not, the Nigerian army has no reason to have gone against the particular order given. That there is nothing democratic at all in that. Now, let me say this when you say the, the word ill equipped, for every battle, there will always be an equip a better equipped side mm. for every battle. Okay. But there's also a better motivated side or a more courageous side. These are all, these are all perspectives. Sometimes we're better equipped. Mm. But maybe uh, ill motivated. Sometimes we're better equipped, okay. But we may not be 
courageous. Okay. Yeah? Sometimes too much comfort is not even good mm. because then you have something to live for. <laughs> you understand? I and see. so you don't want to fight. Mm. You know, so unfortunately, these are the peculiarities of, 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 of every profession has its own peculiarities and hazards. Okay. Okay, so um, there are things that go with the territory. I, I don't know if I've answered your question, <laughs> but you cannot take one and leave the other. You have to look at things okay. holistically. Let, let's quickly move on to other issues. Okay. As we talk about preparations ahead of 2015 general elections, of course, um, Michael Marie talked recently about um, how Nigerians need to be security conscious during this youth out as there are uh, suspected cases of bomb attacks where people are congregated and all of that. But what is of more interest to Nigerians now is how we intend to keep a safe society, a safe community and environment within the confines of all the political campaigns and all of that. An update on that would be uh, 2015 elections danger looms. Akiyemi is saying that on the front page of the Vanguard, writes Jonathan Buhari. There are stories now as regards these two people signing somewhat like an agreement in the form of a document. Some have said we saw it fly during the APC National Convention. You recall that all those five presidential aspirants were asked to sign that if this thing goes well, then nobody will leave. It looks as if it's working. Do you see this also working for 2015? I, 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 when I saw that statement, I'm sure he meant well, but mm. I laughed in vernacular. <laughs> <laughs> the reason is simple. I mean, that's called uh, fire me and fire she, mm. just before the AKT elections, and said, look, you, you should rein in your supporters and all that. Has he stopped it? It hasn't. Mm. They'll pretend that they have, I mean, that the people who have gone there have gone there on their own. Okay. Um, what happened in APC is completely different. Mm. What they simply said was, please, just sign that you will not leave us after. Uh, this, uh, you know, after the the, the, the primaries, okay. it, it had nothing to do with um, you know in this particular case. What, say, what he has said, quite rightly, and he has spoken well as an elder, very responsible, and mm. I commend him for that. Is to say, gentlemen, please, for the sake of this country, not forget your selfish ambitions and your whatever aspirations and all that, and please make a commitment that you will not incite the public, that you will not allow your followers destroy. But people have already said ahead that where if they don't win the election, they will yeah. cause... Already people have started saying that they will cause the things... I mean, the nation will be ungovernable and they will set up parallel governments and things like that. Yeah. You know, which already is, uh, as they would say in movies, a sign of common attractions, yeah. you know? Um, you know, so the statement is well-intentioned, but uh, do we trust some of these people to be able to maintain that. The president has always said that nobody's life is worth his ambition, you know. Um, I would want to hear Buhari make a statement like that, you know, and, 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 to, and, and to tell his followers as well to, to, to not to make the kind of incite, uh, inciting statements they've made. We have heard people say, Amechi, for instance, has gone to make certain statements that are inciting and, and, and things like that. We shouldn't, you know, so the statement is welcome. But you know, but can you trust, you know, uh, some of these people to be able but to have we really in their followers? been able to define incitive statements within the confines of the law in Nigeria? Someone just retweeted on our Twitter and now one of the things said by Mr. President, where he said, "I have no enemies to fight. You are all my friends, and we share a common destiny." That's from Af Asha, at Jeffrey Asha. Thank you for that tweet. But. Do you think that indeed? Because These are I could the kind recall of statements mm. I expect, you know, mm. from from all sides. It is important that they begin to make statements like this. The president has been making that. I want to see uh, Buhari and his followers begin to make statements like that. It helps okay. because then people know. Okay, look, our, our our principal is not interested in violence. He thinks we should be peaceful. He thinks we should follow things orderly. He thinks. We should let the cause decide even if things don't work in our favor. That's what I expect him to begin to make, and it's about time. Mm. You know, so uh, unless they begin to make statements like that, their silence itself can be misconstrued. I mean, if if my followers are killing people and I just keep quiet and turn the other way and say I'm not involved, what does that say? Mm. You understand? But if I call, I say, no, stop it. We must not kill. Nobody, these are your brothers. You cannot kill. You cannot kill your brothers on account of what somebody else has done somewhere. That is what I expect them to do. 
Well, in a situation, for instance, we had an aftermath of violence in the 2011 election. Do you think that actions were decisive enough, were corporates brought to book in such a way that there wouldn't be a repetition of what we experienced that year? When you say corporates being brought to book, how do you even, I mean, you know, uh, there's a way you, 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 you go after people and then they throw up the religious and ethnic. You will see it every day. They throw up the ethnic and religious cards and they make you, they make you look like uh, a villain, you know, unfortunately. Um, yes, yeah, corporates may not have been, I mean, I don't know if any serious arrests were made that, you know, what, they, what we need right now is moral suasion, really. And that's, the letter won't do it. What we need to do is tell these people to start telling their followers. They should start speaking out. But some of them are not. What they are saying is itself have, is already telling us what they have in mind. They will set up parallel governments and things like we don't begin to talk about what you already say. Statements like that almost begin to bother on treason. Well, you know, I asked earlier if we've been able to clearly identify what treasonable statements are. The president recently uh, talked about some of our major statements being acts of treason. Yes. But then we've not been able to say, oh. Guy, you said something wrong. You should be accountable for what you've yeah, said. For instance, the there were yeah, some people. The there were some people. Can you go and touch him, right? You can't touch the him. The allegation right that someone said that if the elections do not favor him, that Nigeria will become ungovernable. That particular fellow that was accounted to have said that did not have immunity over him. Have we been able to address these issues? Bring there out will be clear that, There are times when, uh, as they say, discretion is a better part of valor. When you apply a bit of discretion, then you go and grab a man like that, and he tells you he's being victimized because either because he's a Muslim or a Christian, or because he's from a certain region. Mm -hmm. And then what happens is, in trying to save the lives of a hundred people, you end up losing a thousand people. Okay. So you look at it sometimes, and then you you balance it and say, okay, if you let this lie, there will be minimal damage. If you go after this person, the collateral damage will be such that. A conflagration may start, I may not be able to cut, curtail or control. Mm. You know, so sometimes you just look at things like that and, and balance. It's like when the issue of uh, Sharia came up and Obasa just looked at it and he could have gone after the people. Some of these were, some of these were unconstitutional, but he just said, look, let it go. It will die a natural death. And those who find those embers have, the thing has fizzled out because it was not sustainable. But if you went after it that time, they'll throw up the religious trump card and this country would have gone up in flames. So sometimes you apply a bit of discretion. That's this one shit. Let's get from the MCR now certain reactions from some of the politicians that participated in the just concluded primary elections. As we begin to talk about the character of these politicians, their nature, and even indeed we have gotten to that level where uh, Nigerian politicians can accept defeat and work solemnly, also to speak peacefully with the opposition as we count down to the 2015 general elections. Don't forget that you can tweet us at Cool Digest Live, and we'll also open the phone lines for you soon so we can hear your opinion as we get all of this. I want to reiterate that we never planned to leave the PDP. We are not chased out leader, but it was evident that the current leadership of the party has gone and forgotten that politics is not the same as election. If the party now decide that people should be there should be proofs or somebody should be voted for in absentia, well, that's left for the party. But as far as I'm concerned, you should be physically present for you to contest an election. That is what the electoral rule says. Like a covenant, blood covenant election. It's not. A, it's not election. It's not election. It's a covenant blood election. Right, just a glimpse of those things that transpired after such certain primary elections were held. We've had situations where aspirants have gone to court, some have decamped literally the same day that the election did not favor them. They just left their party to, feud, uh, to get a particular position from other parties. Would you say that the Nigerian, the average Nigerian politician, is matured enough to manage defeat? <laughs> Look at what's happening on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> And just that is part of my answer. I just want to look at it for a minute or two and then 
It's a shame. Well, uh, what I'm going to say is this. Um, when a candidate wins, mm. oh, it was free and fair. Mm. And when they lose, then uh, there must have been a blood covenant somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, mm. not, in most cases, these things may not always be democratic. Uh, which means sometimes you have winners, you have losers, sometimes fair and square, and other times um, things may have happened in a way that is um, not so fair, if you like. That's right. Um, we have sour losers. You know, there are lots of them, lots of people who have used crooked means, and these crooked means are catching up with them. Yeah? When I look at Akala complaining there, he has been in the position before, and now he's on the loser side, he's complaining. Um, you have a choice. That's why you have many parties. If you don't like it, try your luck elsewhere. Mm -hmm. And if you feel you're popular, which is why really, with the, with the multiplicity of um, political parties, I don't even think the independent candidacy thing is even necessary because all you need to do is just take another platform. And if you think you have um, wide acceptance, mobilize people and they will vote for you. There's no point to be bitter or whatever, you know. Uh, but of course, some want the machinery of a well-established party and all that, which is also good. But we have seen people turn, people who truly have electoral value, mm. who feel they are popular, they've turned small parties into, you know, uh, you know, significant, uh, they made significant inroads with small parties. We saw the issue of PPA with Ojikalu, you know, in one election, even up to governorship. We saw um, uh, Mimiko, well, leave PDP for uh, what do you call it? Um, uh, Labour Party took it from obscurity to to somewhere. And so these things are possible, mm -hmm. you know. So, but you find a lot of them, you know, all the hard feelings and all that. Uh, frankly, I don't have my sympathy. If the party is not fair to you, no problem. Look for look go elsewhere if you feel you're you're popular. Unless you just want to ride on the machinery of that party. You know, so that's, that's, that's my thought. Beyond all, all of this now, do we have a matured electorate that has graduated to that point to be able to analyze these characters critically to understand if indeed they have been able to prioritize national or state interest or community interest, so to speak, above their own personal yearnings? You'll be shocked. There's a high level of voter awareness. You will see what has been happening across. A lot of a lot of things you never imagined that are happening already. Mm. The governors that were so powerful, you might say these are not the general electoral just politicians doing primaries and all that. But even at that, the almighty governors are crumbling. You can see that happening. There's a lot happening already. Um, so um, there's a high level of awareness right now. Um, if you underrate the electorate, you do that at your period. I want to give an example, a metaphor for the ordinary, so-called ordinary electorate. The one you call Malam, uh, the term you, you, you know, when you talk about the, the house on, on the street, the one you put in front of you, your, your, the one that guards your house, mm -hmm. is far more politically aware than even the so-called uh, or guy in the house. Mm -hmm. He's there with his radio, you know, um, constantly tuned to Radio France International, the, Interna the House of Russia, the uh, Deutsche Welle, the House of Russia, BBC, House of Service, uh, VOA, House of Service. He's aware of everything that is going on, okay? He knows who the candidates are. He knows what the issues are. And he knows, I mean, from the media, the media sets agenda. These people pick up these things, and they know. You know, the man there in the big house probably does not know that something is already happening on the streets, but the man in front of his house from the radio is already aware. How come we've not We're been too able... busy listening to watching CNN. We don't follow local politics. But how come the electorate, even though they are this politically aware, have not been able to bring all of this knowledge to bear on decision-making at the polls? No. You see, when you say so, you are being subjective. Probably what you're saying does not agree with your own individual thought. And so we often say, these people don't know what they're doing. It's not true. They know what they're doing. The truth is, the elite who don't even vote 
probably if things don't work out their way, they say these people are foolish. Sometimes we, we like the issue of uh, stomach infrastructure and all that. Nobody is dragging anybody by the nose. The people know what their priorities are, what they want, what is important to them. What is important to you may not be important to me. And so most times we speak so subjectively and, and pretend that we are being objective. Okay. It is not are true. you saying uh, categorically now that elections we've had thus far in Nigeria have fielded the right and the best candidates by the virtue of the decision, what the quality is, of the decision what making is best? of the electorate? When you say best, I repeat the word, is subjective. What is best to you may not be to me. This is why we vote. No, that you know, maybe you don't understand I my understand question. You. I'm saying, I've, okay, have you? Are you saying that that all the elections we've had in the past have been uh, a function of the will of the people? If have you say, the will of the people. If there is rigging, is a different matter. That's a different matter. But to say whether the people individually voted according to how they wanted to vote, I would say to you yes. But if it is rigged. Is a different matter. Whether it's a reflection of the, those individual votes is a completely different matter. Okay. That's where I'm coming from. Are you okay? I'm trying to understand you now. Is there anything we have to do differently in 2015? Because the public idea has been that Nigerians have not been able to really. Some have even said Nigerians are not really ready for a change. And what? then you also made mention. The word change, listen, you see, I, I repeat the word subjective. Okay. The word change, what you call change, may be different from what I call change. What's the idea of change for Nigeria? Uh, well, change for me. What, what, what you want, what you want, you may want, you may want change at your local government level. I may be satisfied with it. Okay. You may want change at the federal level. I may be satisfied with the status quo. Mm -hmm. I may prefer change at the state level. You understand what I'm saying? And so, don't impose your own on my own. And I don't and I don't, don't expect me to impose mine on yours. If yours does not work out too bad, it mine works out. It mine doesn't work out too bad for me. Okay, that's why we must all go there and vote and guard our votes. So don't you see? Sometimes we tend to feel that's why some people, sometimes when people don't agree with them, they say, "Oh, you are backward. You are a sellout." What do you mean by sellout? I'm entitled to my vote. I'm entitled to my opinion. That's why I have one vote. That's why you have one vote. If things don't work out your way, for God's sake, please, don't, don't begrudge me if my own works out. We must learn to be tolerant. You understand what I'm saying? So that's the point. Go out there, express your list. That's why you're entitled to a vote. That's why the president is entitled to a vote. That's why the governor is entitled to one vote. So right. that's the way it should be. Let's quickly take this um, report. I would like a report now. But of course, we were able to speak with certain uh, public affairs analysts also on this idea of political thuggery. In this few months leading to the general elections, we've seen quite a lot from your state to uh, name it to Abuja to Kaduna, and then we've seen houses burned. We have seen also politicians say one thing or the other. On the issue of violence and political thuggery, which again has come to the fore with killings and violence in some states linked to political activities, we're able to hear this out from some Nigerians. We have been in the struggle for a violent free election. Uh, political thuggery is against the will of God. And those who are engaged in it must stop. Thuggery, people are already dying, you know in over 2015 and a lot more are going to die there is no law whether written or unwritten that supports togri so the concern is definitely against togri all security agencies have decided to come together as one so that all those chemicals that we envisage that will come up you know you know will be forestalled and taken care of there is going to be total synergy of all security agencies, and this is calling on everybody. It's not just security agencies, even politicians and you know the public to give us information so that those problems that we envisage, you know, will be nipped in the bud. Okay, our phone lines are open already, and I understand we have a caller online now. Good morning. Okay. When we are discussion, talking about uh, political progress, that is what we have been experiencing in, in Nigeria. And uh, in doing that, the appointment we see, the 
lot of problems going on the same pocket. I hear and there. We are having problems and there. And what I want to say on this is, if the the police, the police, the police they really put up their ass together for not to find any political party in very, very good so that they cannot be able to, they will not say that uh, 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 they are not, they, are, they don't know what they are doing. If they don't know what they are doing, that is how the political party can be able to to, to manufacture the system, because that is a very big problem. And uh, you see PDP and the NPC in another issue of life. If the political parties can allow free and fair election, that is where you can only say you have had free election in 2015. That is the issue here. So what I want to advise the, 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 the police to put their ass together to us in this system and the IMEX to give us free fair election. So that is my own contribution. Sure, thank you very much for your contribution. Good to hear from you. Uh, the full lines are open. You can also reach us on our Twitter and do at call. See, at Core Digest Live, I beg your pardon, and we can also hear from you. MC, MS Ajadi saying they are just victims of circumstances and it's an injustice because the government know what they're doing. I believe he must be referring to the, uh, the internally displaced persons. The internally displaced persons. And he's also asking the question here should Nigerians entrust PDP with another four years in power, it will result into absolute power that corrupt absolute. He's trying to play with words there. <laughs> he has a vote. He mm. should use it. And everyone is entitled to use their vote. Okay. That's what should speak. You saw the clip earlier as we begin to talk about political thuggery and violence. How come this has now characterized electoral periods in Nigeria? I mean, eh, 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 campaigns had to be stopped and banned for a while in Oyo State. The moment INEC lifted the ban, we saw another dimension of violence. I mean, is there something wrong with the society, with the way we think? It's or not the I society, mean... it's the politicians themselves. First, when you come out to offer yourself for public service, I want to quote the late Dora Akinide Bessasso. When she came out, she wanted to contest for, is it Senate or? I, remember now. I believe it's Senate. The Senate, yes. Mm -hmm. um, she said, unsolicited, totally, uh, thugs came to offer their services. I said, Madam, you need protection. We need, you need, you cannot do this ordinarily. We need to. And she looked at it and said, No, this is not, this is not for me. Okay. So, um, and sometimes you don't have a choice because the other party has, uh, well, the other parties have um, thugs, and if you go unprotected, they might kill you. So you probably just surround yourself with people, even if they are not going to attack, but who will protect you you know, uh, and, and, and stuff like that. So what you find, unfortunately, is that these politicians, the same people that should stop it, mm. that should protect us, that, you, that are using it. So you want to ask yourself, who will save us from these thugs? Who will save us? If the truth is, who will save us from these politicians? Because mm. they are the ones that hire the thugs. They are the ones that use the thugs. They are the ones for whom thuggery thrives. Mm. Is there the market for thugs? But what happens to the recipients? I mean, those people who are being used. For instance, we had one of the northern state governors speak about Nigerians being used as political thugs. And he was asking questions like, well, do you get to see the children of these big politicians? Even when you visit their houses, they're not there. They're not being used as thugs. How come Nigerian youths now feel themselves and make themselves available for use at this time? Just before you answer that, let's take this call. Hello, good morning, Sadiq. Hello? Good morning. Go ahead with a contribution, Hello? please. Uh, I just want to say that, uh, in fact, to win election in Nigeria, one of the characteristics is for you to have money. The second characteristic is for you to have sovereignty. <laughs> that is the characteristic of winning election in Nigeria. As our modern politicians have designed it. So as the other person, the other person has said, if you want to eradicate all those things, you need credible, free and fair. And I might have a lot to do in that regard. It is when they show us the credibility and fair 
fairness in the election that people will get to know that yes, look at what's happening with APC, primary to Lagos. The man that won that election is the least among the contestants in terms of money. That means that Nigerians, or uh, some Nigerians have put their understanding the fact that yes, money policy should be abandoned. And I want to believe too that if we continue like that, Turkey too will be abandoned. Thank you very much. Good to hear from you, Sodi, calling from Kaduna. You still want to talk about how Nigerians have not been able to wake up intellectually, not to, you, you know, just give themselves and yield their services to political thuggery. Well, um, the lack of education on the one hand, um, where uh, illiterate poverty is another where people are manipulated. But I think also the media has a lot to play, has a role to play, in the sense that there's a need to continually sensitize the public on, on, on things like this. If you keep throwing up the question, you know, about, okay, fine, you want us to go to the street, bring your kids out first, you know, and things like that. keep throwing it up all the time, you know, keep throwing it up all the time, people will start thinking. Because in the end, you find that if a politician is saying to you, go out there, the question is, where is your son? Where's your daughter? Okay, you want my son to go out there. What are you doing? You know, um, you know so if, we, if, if that is done, uh, people will start thinking, they start asking questions, and um, they, they will not allow themselves to be used anyhow. Another major issue I re quickly want us to touch on before we go on is um, the PDP presidential fundraising. President APC now pick over the 21 billion naira. What the APC is saying that the money should be used to save power sector, and then you also hear the presidency say that the APC is not focused. But does it not baffle you that there is an earmark, there is there is a yardstick postulated by the law, according to INEC, for how much each political party must spend for particular uh, political offices, and then. Obviously, parties are spending more and more by the day. Yeah, well, first of all, uh, you should be aware that it is a party that raised it, which means this is this is a war chest that we prosecuted across board. Okay. Okay. Mm. Not just for the presidential election. So even the issue of the yardstick for um, presidential election is not valid here because they will spend for presidency. They will distribute to governorship at the governorship level. They will distribute. You know, at the National Assembly levels, they'll distribute at the State Assembly mm -hmm. levels. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think uh, APC is just um, uh, crying sour grape. If they had their way, if they could raise a hundred billion, they would do it. Mm -hmm. You know, the thing is, go and raise your money and don't tell the other party what to do with its money. You know, it's just one of those. For me, it's just they should just concentrate on the issues and leave how much money was raised. If you want, if you have good will and the people believe in you go and raise your own money and when you raise your money do with it what you want in the issue of electoral cap no problem spread it accordingly if there's change keep it in the party's coffer you know so um all that argument for me is neither here nor there let's take wally's call from jazz good morning wally okay good morning i just want to open the this program that is going on all right go ahead please about the man that is with you that has been talking about governor Mickey. If you watch what Governor Amici said that day, Amici said the election is rigged, undermined rigged. Nigeria are tired now. The election should not be rigged. He said the election is rigged. They were going to form a parallel government. That's what he said. And with the situation now on the ground, Nigeria should open their eyes. The election should not be rigged. If the election is not rigged, nobody will do violence. Let the INEC do the right thing. I don't even know why INEC did not introduce what MK Abiola did and so for then, option A4. Immediately at that place, people will know the goal, everybody will go home, everybody will be okay, nobody will fight. And about the violence the man is talking about, I wonder in 2010 and 11, when that man in Katsina made that statement that Nigeria will become ungovernable, nobody supports the law. That man should be arrested immediately. Nobody wants to split the blood, and the president said that nobody blood wants splitting for him to win the election. Then, and 
things that are donating money on that of 21 billion. And we are talking about austerity measures. People are, um, Jerry Ghana is talking about 5 billion. What work has Jerry Ghana done before? He was a minister, he said his friend. He was a minister, he was a lecturer. It's made, no, none of them can buy a, a car in the university, buy a brand new car in the university. All of us in the university, we are buying to Google car. Nobody buys a brand new car. And you're talking about 5 billion. And we're talking about alternative measures. And you are building 21 billion naira down. Nigeria knows the right thing to do now. And Nigeria will follow the right thing. And nobody should lead your nation. Nigeria will remain one by the grace of God, like what the president is saying. Nobody should lead this election. Let the vote count. People are ready. People know who they are going to give their vote to now, this time around. It doesn't matter. We are tired of religious sentiment. Nobody, whether you are Muslim, whether you are Christian, it doesn't matter. Muslim does not bring food to my table. Christian does not bring food to my table. I am surprised why the other did not be fashionable. If you be fashionable, we are a Christian. We go and vote for the right person. So Nigeria is tired now of religion. What will bring food to our table? What will bring peace to the north? If the that man that is talking with you there, if this is the have this is Yobi, have this is Yola, have this is people in your town here, we will still come and see people from this place from Yona, Maduguri, all of them are in jobs here. If you see those children, you will pity them. A lot of children are there now in jobs. And you are not even pity. Or those people are running down here. A lot of them, if you go to the camp, you interview them, they are so sad. That there is no government that is guiding them, that is protecting them. They are tired. If you see them, you pity them. And when they are wet, salary, December, we wait. Lots of people have not gotten December salary, November salary. They will contribute for these people to be. The weather is just so chill, so cold. Go and see those children there. Are we in the country? In our own country, we are refugees in our own country. It is sick. It is It's all right, Wale. I believe you made your point there. Thank you very much. Yeah, I can't recall you that. talk about Amici. Uh, uh, you know, well, <laughs> uh, the point he made there, I think um, I kept using the word subjective. I think the word rigging, we talked about a politician. When a politician loses, he say we it was rigged. And when he wins, he said it was fair and square. What I've said is vote and make sure your vote counts. There will not be any... Uh, there are very few people who... Even the person was famed to have said an election when he lost... The election was free and fair. Later turned around and said it was not. He went to court and just lost reset the inequity. You know, you see, when you make a statement like that, you say, if the election is rigged, the question is, how do you determine whether it is free and fair? Okay. You know, if it is rigged, you know, let INEC do their job and then guard your vote, keep your records. You have representatives. But when you make a statement like that, obviously you are preempting, you know? You are saying, okay, it, uh, how if you go and do violence tomorrow now, you say it was rigged, you use that as an excuse. You know, you will claim that it was rigged. You know, so, and as for what is, is said in Jaws, I, 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 I quite sympathize with the entire displaced persons. I know what the situation is in Jaws, uh, because I've been there and I know the place very well. And I know what, I know, I know what is, is pitiable. Really, and I'm just hoping that, particularly in a place like Georgia, it's really cold, mm -hmm. that there's a lot of soccer. And I know the Georgia people are really good people, and they're doing what they can to support them. But I think government should do even more. Let's quickly them. go back to this 21 billion naira issue. Yes, yes. Uh, you recall that the 2015 budget, less than 15 percent, was earmarked for capital expenditure. At the time, we were talking about a fall in oil price austerity measures. We thought that much will go into capital expenditure at this time. But there are also on the streets opinions that is an election year and that might be responsible for lots of millions of dollars being earmarked to recurrent expenditure. Not necessarily. Um, it's even through capital expenditure that um, uh, you, you funnel a lot of these monies. Because that's why you give contracts. You understand? You, you say, okay, you give money to build a bridge and you can inflate it, quote unquote, you know, and, and, th and things like that. Um, um, recurrent expenditure, these are things like salaries and things like that, that you know, are constant that you, you know, you, 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 you spend whether or not uh, other things are happening. You know, so I, I, I don't think that is, that is really uh, an issue. Um, uh, consigned to it, one billion, these are private individuals that have decided to contribute. All the parties will do it, whether they make it public or not. Mm. They are fundraisers. I mean, 
Um, Amici was famed to have uh, uh, provided the bulk of the war chest for uh, the uh, for Buhari during the primaries. Let me just hold you for a minute. Let's take Adebi's call from Lagos. Good morning, Adebi. Uh, good morning. Yeah, go ahead with the contribution. Hello, good morning. Good, good morning. morning. Uh, please, I'd like to contribute to that, uh, uh, the thing you are saying there. Uh, number one thing, I want to greet uh, the man in class. Good morning. Good morning, sir. And uh, you, the moderator, I mean the man himself in the uh, call TV news. Good morning to you, too. Good morning, my brother. Uh, please, uh, please, the problem is this. Uh, you can hear the stomach infrastructure going on in the country now, in the Kiki State. That shows the level of uh, poverty in Nigeria today. I believe that they cannot come to my house and give me one ticket, money, and this thing. So, uh, it's spread all over Nigeria. We, Nigeria, we are hungry for change. We must change. Uh, we say, Jonah, Jonah, Jonah. When you hear that message in the Bible, Jonathan, you know, Jonathan was sleeping. He has made people to advise him wrongly. We love that man, but he cannot do this country very well. There's no means of going back. We have to do it right this time around. Change okay, is all we need. So the young man, please monitor your speech. We want you to monitor your speech. Nigerians are watching you. Really, if you are from there, please do things right with them. Do not destroy any other party. That is my message. Good morning to you all. Good morning. The young man, was he talking to me or you? I think he was, was referring to me. But you see, <laughs> that sounds like a veiled threat, and mm -hmm. I take an exception to it. The reason mm -hmm. is that I'm entitled to an opinion just as he's entitled to one. And so you cannot come and begin to threaten me on air and say, watch your speech. I, I speak as a Nigerian, and I have a right to speak as a Nigerian. And I try to be as objective as I can, you know. And um, it's not about one party or the other. The issue of change, I keep repeating this, subjective is an individual thing. I may want, where I want change may not be where you want change. You know, it's, you, know you, you can't impose your views on other people. I can't impose my views on you. You want change at a certain level. I want change at a certain level. We all want change at different levels and all that. No, change is a constant factor. That's and right. I think it should be like that. But please, don't come and threaten me on air. I don't, I don't think it is right. <laughs> we have a right, you know, to, to our opinions. To speak should, your mind. Which is, he okay. has spoken, mm. and I cannot condemn him about his opinion. Just like our Twitter handle is yes. on the screen right now, and you know, anybody can also, just like every other person is speaking his or her mind. The Bring Back Our Girls is also following, uh, the, the hashtag is also following us as we speak right now on Twitter. And an amazing statistics they have here is day 252 of abduction, three days to Christmas, 10 days to the new year. And then they now have the hashtag bring back our girls. How relevant do you see this particular abduction story, uh, a situation? How much impact do you see it having on the 2015 election? Because earlier we were able to hear from the SSA to Mr. President on publicity, Donyo Kupe, who was saying that um, the abduction was not the president's fault and that um, nobody should use it at this time as a political tool or campaign against Mr. Jonathan's administration? First, I want to say that as a parent, as a Nigerian, as a human being, I feel sad that those girls will not be spending Christmas with their family. Um, I wish it were otherwise. And, you know, I'm not sure that's how they planned it. These were very young kids in school. I'm sorry, oh. I have to hold you for a minute. Yeah. Please don't lose that trend of thought. Good morning, Judge from Kaduna. If you're there, Judge, please I, go ahead with a contribution. I don't yes, I know the matter. I don't know why somebody that is in peace, somebody that is in peace is compared to who this country. The man is doing like a kangaroo. You want to turn it into a kangaroo thing? What I'm trying to say, what Mr. David is saying is the right thing, but you need, you need not to threaten that man. The man has his own opinion. That is all about, about democracy. It will allow democracy to win. 
on the 21 billion. Let me see if you want to bring billion. Nigeria knows the right thing to do. Some of them say they were collecting money for you to swear. Let them bring their rights, I will collect. Let them bring their money, I will collect. But I know who I'm going to vote for. I know who I'm going to vote for. People should not, and on Antonio Kupe again, should not point this Jonathan. Many of us know what we did for Jonathan in 2011. Many of us, our house was burned down in Kaduna. Many of us in Kaduna, our house was burned down because, because we have a name of a Christian. But now, everybody is white. Whether you are a Christian or Muslim, nobody cares in Samaran. We want the right thing to be done. We don't want to know whether you are a Yoruba man, whether you are a pastor, whether you are a Christian, it doesn't matter. What we want is change, and that change will be done. Nobody should fight. The election must be free and fair. Nigeria are angry now. Let President Jonathan send people around. These people that are going around, they are bringing money. They will not do the right thing. I'm telling you, people are ready to eat money. They even say that they should go and bring something, they will swear with the ground, they will collect the money. People are saying now that it's Nigeria money, they will swear with the and buy food, they will eat the money and do the right thing. So let me tell, let me tell the young man, that, uh, the man that is there, uh, I'm sorry if I'm calling young man, I'm very sorry. But what I'm trying to say is that to attain the right thing, you have your own opinion. Have my one vote, you have your one, one vote. Nobody should threaten anybody in Nigeria. Go there, go this way, wait there, and let the state be country. And let the results to be declared. What we are saying, we want free and fair election. I need to say for over a time we are at the degree. He was an electoral in the master degree in, in, in Bayero. He, oh. he has credibility. I see. He has credibility to be brought to bear now. We want the credibility. And That's Nigeria right. are ready to go in the general and from south, south west, south east, south north, south anywhere. <laughs> I believe you made your point there, Jared. Thank you very much for your contribution. My guest's name is Victor Hai. Stop calling me young man. Ah, how can I be here? You'll be calling me. I look younger than you. Come on. But then, it, but he it's... spoke very well. Mm. And he's a political scientist, obviously. Mm. And, and that's the thing. That's the spirit. This is what brings tolerance. You have your opinion. I have my opinion. We express it with our votes. That's you understand? Right. And he spoke, he spoke very well. You know, thank you very much, sir. Okay, uh, let's move away from the Okaos. Uh, Kayode Olubokola tweeted us now, and he says, corruption country only, governmental people. Uh, well, looks as if exactly what um, George said, that Nigerians are angry. We were talking about the abduction of the Chibor girls yes. and how it impacts on uh, electoral and political campaigns. Would you agree with that school of thoughts that says that this issue should not be brought to the fore at all? for campaign purposes? I'll be honest with you. Um, I have said it on this station not once, not twice, that if we adopt, if we adopted the Ebola approach, this country would be a lot better. Mm. Uh, the reason these girls have stayed this long, perhaps, is because we were politicizing the issues or the issue. Um, I don't think we should play politics with this issue. We have a common problem. Nigeria is at war. Mm. whether we accept it or not. And the truth is, if Boko Haram overruns Nigeria today, there will be nobody to rule. Mm. We should look at the common enemy and stop blaming each other or playing politics with it. Um, the way it is right now, quite frankly, for me, neither the opposition nor the ruling party is directly responsible for this insurgency. You know, I don't think APC is behind Boko Haram, and I don't think PDP is behind it. We have a common enemy, and we must treat it so. Let's quickly take Abdul Karim's call, just a okay. minute, Victor, from a lorry. Good morning, Abdul Karim. Yes. Are you there? Okay, good morning. Good, good morning. morning if I want to make a comment on the statement made credible to Governor Amici. Governor Amici did not say that we APC is going to form the final uh, government. He said, if the election is leaked, take that point, leaked, APC is going to form a parallel government. Secondly, on the issue of 21 billion naira, can you just imagine the kind of country we find ourselves, where we have power failure, there's no light, nothing, and power sector is donating the 5 billion naira to President Jonathan for campaign. When we don't have light, 
we are part of this government. We need change. We need somebody that will, that will, that will, that will do better for this country. We are tired of this problem oh, here and here. Power sector, no life, nothing. And they are contributing 5 billion naira for campaign. Thank you very much. Good to hear from you, Abdul Karim from Elorin. Please go ahead. We we're talking about um, the, the girls. The girls. You know, so I think we should stop playing politics with it. Um, what is more important is to get these girls back, not look for cheap political points with it. After all, the Americans came and they couldn't do anything. Um, it's not a conventional war. It's not so easy. I, I, the FARC rebels recently abducted um, a general in, in Colombia. And before that, they adopted a vice president, the vice president of the country. You know, they've been at war since 1963 with the government of Colombia. You know, this, this, this is another country that has similar problems. With, it's like the Boko Haram problem, with, except that there, I mean, they do, except that theirs is not, the, the ideology behind it is not religion, like uh, the Boko Haram uh, uh, ideology. You know, so this has been on. So I think what we should do is come as a people identify our common enemy and fight the enemy and stop. If we continue to politicize, I tell you what, even if APC were to get the government tomorrow, I don't think they're involved in it and I don't think they have a magic wand that would translate things overnight. What you'll find is a situation where this thing will continue. What if PDP continue to use it again? It won't help. So I think what we should do is let's, let's see how we can work together. The lives of these guys is more important. You know, there, we, we, need to, we need to show more concern and stop playing cheap politics with it. Let's see how we can come together using the Ebola, I keep saying it, the Ebola strategy to see how we can get, not just these girls, but several more that have since been captured, mm. how, we can see, how we can get them free and so they can have a good Christmas like the rest of us. Well, rounding up now, we're just going to take about two more calls before we go on the show uh, this Monday. But to head 2015 general elections, you know, the big question has always been, what role does the electorate has to play? We talk about this often, but are there uh, particular specific roles that Nigerians need to play? For instance, we've heard people say, D -d don't just go to vote. Ensure that you protect your vote. How do we protect our votes and not cross the violence line this election what we need is sincerity sincerity and again sincerity and i think that we should be careful about inciting people we should be gathered with us when people lose they should accept it now samuel is calling from a lorry let's yeah, just quickly yeah. take his call and find out what okay. he has to say uh, good morning samuel my comment is just very simple you want to talk about uh, book uh, in the first system hello can you hear me yes we can go ahead Okay. You see, what happened about this issue of Boko Haram, when it started, uh, the likes of, uh, uh, okay, the likes of PDP were busy going about saying Boko Haram is a uh, APC, whatever, whatever. And that is why we politicize this thing. And that is why it gets to this extent. And why me as a person, that's why I said this is the, the, the issue of Boko Haram, it is the... The PDP know everything about it. Is it when you watch these three cars, American things, you know that everything that happens in a country, the president of the day, he has the security, he has the police, he has the army, he has the everything. The intelligence are there. So why the girls are still there for months in the bush? If the daughter of a minister is being kidnapped, I will tell you today, they will have rescued the daughter. But because these girls are no the daughter of nobody, and that's why I think that I did. I be, uh, everybody is wiser now because every one of us we are yearning for change. We want change. This government has failed woefully. God bless Nigeria. Well, good to hear from you. Please go ahead with a contribution. Yeah. So, um, well, he just said it there. We need to stop playing politics with this and. Um, you know, uh, in the in the in the national interest, and if we do that, hopefully it would uh, it would help. We cannot continue to to trade blames because it doesn't solve the problem. We're talking about how to protect one's vote without okay, crossing yes. the violence line. Yeah. Mm. Um, on the issue of protecting votes, every polling vote is supposed to have 
a representative of the parties. Okay. In this era of um, what you call it now, social media, mm -hmm. it's not difficult to collate results, although the final result will come from, you know, the, um, uh, let's just say from INEC, okay? okay. Mm -hmm. But we should, we should learn to be tolerant, we should be honest That's right. about the results, and we should be sincere, mm -hmm. you know, in the greater interest of the country. Because if you incite people, and they go out there and they die. Quite frankly, the blood is on your head. You may not have been physically involved, but by your actions or inactions, you may have caused um, the violence and possibly the death on the street. Unfortunately, my politicians don't care. They're too selfish. You know? So I'm hoping that you know, we can get people who will be sincere, who will be truthful, and who will, who will learn to accept results as, as they truly are. Victor Hai, thank you very much for joining us today on Cold thank Ideas. You. It's a pleasure to always have you. A big thank you to all of our callers. We had um, our courage judge rather calling in from Kaduna, Sadiq called from Kaduna as well, Nasamu and Abdul Karim called in from Ilori and Wale from Jaws as well as Adivi from Lagos. Don't forget that you can drop your comments, your contribution, your questions and inquiry on our, our official Twitter and do it at Core Digest Live and we'd we'll love to add you and tweet at you and do all of that together. As we kickstart uh, 2014 in retrospect on this show, bringing all of the landmark uh, stories that broke in 2014, giving you in-depth review, core analysis, exactly what we do better on Cold Digest. I am Nifemi Ogunto. But before I go, let's do the ABC theme again. Quite interesting. MCR, where's my script now? All right, let's start with the first page. Now, imagine the APC. I mean, did I say APC? <laughs> imagine <laughs> the APC, rather, being in numbers, okay? Then A goes for 1, B for 2, and it goes all like that. You're going to have them 1 to 26, okay? Now, what happens when we add up certain concepts like hard work, okay? When you add up hard work, given the numbers attached to this alphabet, then you're going to have 98%. Knowledge gives you 96%. Love gives you 54%. And luck only has about 47%. All right. None of them actually makes 100% yet. So what makes 100%? Is it money? If you add up money, it gives you only 72%. Leadership? No. Leadership gives you 97%. But then every problem has a solution, okay? Only if we perhaps change one particular concept called attitude. Either attitude towards life, okay, that gives us 100%. They say life is 10% of everything that happens to you. It's 90% of how you react to them. So, Nigerian, how would you react to the issues as they arise? Only your attitude can tell. We hope you have the positive attitude to life as we together fight for a better, united and prosperous country. I am Nifemi Ogunto here. Stick around for the top of the hour news. Don't go away, please. You can now watch Core TV News live from anywhere in the world on our website, www.coretvnews.com. Click on Live TV on our website and watch us live. And welcome to Core TV Primetime News. To follow us on Twitter, click on Twitter icon on our website and Facebook Click on the Facebook and YouTube to see all our previous news production. You can also watch us live on YouTube. Click Call TV, leave a space, then news. Call TV News, a 24-hour news station. TV News, expanding your view.